every year a new phone comes out and every year I get inundated with the same question. And that is all about using a timer, using a delayed shutter, that sort of thing. And I'm gonna bust a bit of a myth for you here. G'day guys, my name's Shane Mostyn. If you haven't been here before, this channel is all about astrophotography with cell phones. Now I'll tell you, I've taken over the years before cell phones, before the YouTube channel, I was shooting with DSLRs, mirrorless cameras, all that sort of stuff, and I've done it for years. I've taken literally thousands upon thousands of astrophotos. And through all of those photos, the way you take it with this, and the way you take it with this, are very different. Years ago, before mirrorless cameras, I was shooting with DSLRs, and every single movement that happens in one of these, sitting on top of a tripod, will affect your photo at the end of the day. Even with the DSLRs, many cameras had functions where you could lock up the mirror, so that mirror vibration wasn't happening inside the camera when you were shooting the stars. And with this sort of camera, I 100% of the time we'll shoot stars with a timer on this or a Bluetooth remote, one of those things. And it's for a very good reason. And that reason is that sitting up here on top of the tripod, even though it doesn't look like it's moving around at all, that little micro movements affects the photo in a dramatic way. I'll set this up really quickly here and just get a shot of the stars. Now I'm just gonna take a photo with this now. It's all set up. Those who are interested, this is an A7R3. Um, this is not the best camera for astrophotography. It's actually my old wedding camera. Um, and I'm shooting here with a ISO of 2000, f2.8. I'm gonna shoot for a 20 second. I've got the, uh, ex uh, the, the focusing all the way to um, infinity. Now, it's taking a photo right now. We'll come back in a second and see how this goes. All right, there we go. That photo is, uh, it's, it's composed like a dog's hind leg. That's composed really badly. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put a, a shutter delay on there and I'll, I'll show you what this actually looks like. I've taken two photos now. I've taken one with a uh, shutter delay on there and one without the shutter delay. And zooming in here, the one you can absolutely tell which one was done with the shutter delay and which one wasn't. There are little bumps all through it. The camera didn't move when I took it. My finger touching the shutter button and letting it go again is enough to make this thing, well, unusable. So you need to do it 100% of the time with this sort of camera. Doing it with a phone is, well, there's just, there's no need. You don't need to use the shutter delay on a phone. And the reason for it is the computational photography element that comes into it with phones. Sure, you can go out and spend as much money as you want to. There's many ways to shoot an iPhone. Um, you can use, what can you use? You can use an Apple Watch. And I used to do this quite a lot. I used to use my watch and I still use the Samsung watch with the S25 Ultra when the camera is down way low and for the composition that I want. and. I can't see what it's actually pointing at, so I will use my watch to compose the photo. And well, more often than not, I'll, and when it's in that sort of situation, I'll use the, the watch as well to, to shoot the shutter. And I was doing that with the iPhone as well. Um, there is absolutely, though, no reason at all, to, when your phone is sitting on a tripod like this, as high as this, as stable as this, you absolutely do not need to use. Um, let me just set this up for night mode for maximum. There's maximum. That's composed quite badly, not even remotely flat. And 10 seconds, 30 seconds, hit the shutter button, let it take a photo. So you can use uh, your Apple Watch to do it. You can configure Siri to take a photo for you as well. You can use a Bluetooth remote. What else can you use? What else am I not thinking of here? Uh, headphones, you can use the headphones. There's many, many ways to do, uh, to, to fire the shutter button, there's heaps. My point is, for doing astrophotography, this long exposure stuff, you just don't need to. So that's finished taking a photo now. I'm going to take another one now with the shutter button on a delay, and we'll see how it turns out. There we go, both of these photos are exactly the same. The only exception is the way that the photo was taken. One was with the timer, one was without the timer. I'm not even gonna tell you which one was which. I'm just gonna put them on the screen here and let me know in the comments what you think, because I can tell you now, I don't think there's any difference at all. Now look, there are exceptions to this. With the iPhone using the camera module, as in the camera app, there are no exceptions. This is just how it works. It's never been an issue for me, and I've, I've, like I said in the beginning, I've taken thousands of photos of this, and it's never ever been an issue. 
The exceptions are when you start bringing apps into it and with other phones, like the, the full manual controls on say a Samsung phone or a Huawei phone, that I would use a shutter a release sometimes. If I thought it didn't work quite well or the tripod wasn't quite what I wanted it to be, I would use a shutter. If I'm in doubt, I would use the shutter uh, delay, the, the timer. The, other, the exception with the apps are things like even longer, things like reflex. When you're on a tripod, and you're going to use that longer shutter, longer, longer um, shutter speed, as in a, 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 a long exposure photo. That shutter button pushing it will absolutely 100% affect it. So use the timer in those situations. If you think I'm wrong, put a comment down here, and I'm more than happy to have a discussion about it. I've, like I said, I've taken so many of these photos, and it's never ever been an issue. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. I'll see you next time.